This is a plastic digital caliper from Amazon. This was a lightning deal for six bucks. Normal price is about ten. And I got another one. I just fitted the one with a switch. So this way it will save the battery from depletion. So it works great. However, I also thought about putting inside, since there is a little bit of space, putting one of the tiny timers. And this is a CMOS timer. The model number is C005. And I also took one and ground this side. So whatever I did not need, uh, just to make it smaller. And this is uh, probably about half the size of the original, half of the area. And now the board inside of the caliper, it looks like this. And I thought about putting that little timer right here next to the blob of the original caliper and then use one of the main switches, uh, the zero and on off switch, to trigger uh, the timer, set it to maybe 24, maybe uh, 48 minutes, and then it will just turn off and then I'm going to measure the current, the quiescent current. And I have a feeling that this is going to work great and the current consumption should be minimum, should be such that the battery will last uh, virtually forever. So I'm going to test it out. So I drew a diagram. Uh, this is what I'm going to do. And this is the little timer. The reset, which is most important, will be from the same button, the on, off, and zero, which is the top button on the on the caliper. So it already has two functions. It zeroes and turns it on and off, but you will have also the reset for the timer. So third function added to it. And I will see how much current this circuit will draw, how this will work, and how it will fit inside. I start working on the board by removing this pad, and this goes to the negative terminal of the battery. And then there will be three traces. There's one on this side, one on the other, and one right underneath that connect this terminal to this area. So I have to disconnect it because this has to be isolated and only run to the timer. The battery supplies the timer alone. I have made four tiny cuts on the printed circuit board. Uh, first is the three contact traces from the negative terminal of the battery right over the red square. This red square is a masking tape which I'm going to use to and make sure that this is isolated and there is a trace running to the right, to the left and to the bottom and they all cut. You can use tip of exacto knife or Dremel. And the other cut is by the switch, the first one here. And there is a cut between the uh, one of the terminals and the main trace, grounding trace. So this is one cut and three cuts around the negative terminal of the battery and they have to be made in order uh, to continue the circuit. This is the finished board and I added a little timer next to it and according to the schematic this is the timer, that's the 10 meg SMD right here at the tip. I'm going to close it up a little bit here with 10 mega ohm resistor for timing, 42 minutes. And you can see that the trigger wire, the little thin wire goes to the bottom part of this switch. This one is membrane switch with four pins, but uh, they are connected. Two and two are connected together, so it's actually two pin. And the two diodes go to the, uh, to the top terminal of that switch. One goes to the ground, the other one goes to the, the minus of the, the timer board. This is the finished project and uh, it, as you can see I used the magnet wire and I used nail enamel to hold it together. So everything is on the board, everything should be working. I'm going to put it together and test it out. The time I set for 42 minutes and the reason is that the timer is not reset with the push of the button. With the push of the button, the timer starts its cycle, and the cycle does not change when you press it again, so it doesn't reset it again. 
and this is why I decided to give it a little bit more time. So if you work on something, it's not going to annoy you. And this is the schematic. I'm going to post the schematic at the end of the video. So all you do is cut a couple of places, add diodes. Now these square points is what you add to the circuitry. So you have to add a few uh, connections. And without this resistor, the timing cycle would not stop. So it has to be in place with 3 volts, 750K, it takes uh, 4 microamps, so it's uh, not a big deal. But without it, the timer does not uh, end its cycle, so I had to put it in. And I used tiny little diode, the last diode as you can see right here by the switch. Uh, so these are the two little 4148s. Uh, I'm going to bring it a little closer. Now you can see the glass diodes, the reddish little diodes. So everything is kind of routed so it doesn't uh, occupy much space. And the wire from the negative contact, I ran straight up uh, to the edge of the board. And the reason is that the white drawing under the battery place is the clearance for the little drawer that contains the battery. So I kept everything away from that area uh, for the drawer not to catch any wires and not to interfere with anything. And at the end I'm going to clean the contacts for the LCD with isopropyl alcohol. Just make sure if I touch it with a finger so there is no residue, uh, no uh, finger oils or anything on it. This is a little bit different solution to the switch, however it works perfect. It will cut off the battery and save it for the life of the battery, so it's going to have a shelf life with moderate use. After 42 minutes the caliper turns off completely, so now I can move the slider, it doesn't turn on, it will turn on when I hit this button. And as I turn it on, it will go for another 42 minutes. Even if I turn it off now uh, by holding it for 3 seconds, I can still turn it on by hitting the slider. So it works perfect and in the off state, after the timer finishes its cycle, uh, the current consumption is very close to zero. It's actually 0 0.1 or very very close to zero which is perfect. Now I'm going to compare the current consumed by both calipers. This one has just a mechanical switch. There is no alteration in the circuitry whatsoever. And this one has the timer, the CMOS, little CMOS timer to turn it off after 42 minutes of operation. And I'm going to uh, check the currents, uh, see the consumption of it and compare uh, the two calipers. I have removed the batteries in both calipers and I'm going to be using a little jig that I made and this will imitate the battery and the supply will come from 3 volts from two batteries in series and I'm going to run both calipers and watch the currents in different states. The caliper is being supplied from outside source, this is 3 volts, two batteries in series and the microamps are 21, 21 microamps in on state. I'm going to turn it off using just a regular factory switch on the caliper, so I hold it for a couple of seconds, it goes off, and now I'm going to look at the microamps, and this is almost 19 microamps, so it didn't really uh, drop the current consumption of the current a lot, it's only about 10% less, and this is why these are notorious for depleting the batteries really, really fast. And obviously if I turn off the switch, it will drop to zero. Let me just click the switch first. Okay, and now we watch the microamps and there is nothing. So this is what we want for storage, for keeping in the toolbox. And now as soon as I turn it back on, the microamps jump back to 21. I'm going to test the other caliper. This one has the timer, the little timer inside, so I'm going to check the uh, current consumption in that one. This is the caliper modified with 
little timer added inside and this one in the on state consumes 33 microamps so it's about 12 microamps uh, more uh, than the other one however uh, what I'm interested in is how much current it will draw after the timer cycles so I'm going to wait 42 minutes and show you what the consumption is in the off state uh, now let me just turn off with the factory switch so I'm going to press it for a couple of seconds and we'll see what the consumption will drop to and this should be in theory it should be uh, the same as this one which is 19 plus the 12 so this would be about uh, 30 31 uh, microamps and let's take a look yeah 30 a little over 30 microamps so uh, it's not bad, uh, but it's not what we want for the Kuiper. Now, let's see what happens after 42 minutes. Now, 42 minutes is up. The caliper turned off uh, by itself. So, right now I'm going to check the microamps and it's zero, which is perfect. That's what we want. And this means that I can keep it in a drawer in the toolbox overnight, never worry about depleted battery at all. And I don't have the mechanical switch. It will turn off by itself after the 42 minute timing set with the resistor here. And now I'm going to turn it back on by pressing the reset button. And then let's take a peek and we have 33 microamps back to operation current. So this is it. Well, thank you for watching. Give a thumbs up if you like it.